Okay, so listen, I think we will kick off. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to welcome everybody to uh, this uh, ESRI Educate Together webinar. So uh, again, as you as you know, we're going to be talking about uh, the, the new study on student and school leader experience of Educate uh, Together second level. Uh, so this is work that has been conducted by my colleagues, uh, Selena McCoy and Georgiana Mihut. Um, the, the work was done very much in collaboration uh, with Educate Together, and we've ended up with a really, really fascinating study. It's a somewhat unusual study, I think, uh, for the SRI to have done, uh, but I think we're sort of reflecting the type of studies we've been doing increasingly in, in, in recent years. This is a, a mixed method study uh, where a lot of rich information uh, has been distilled uh, from sort of qualitative work, quantitative work and uh, just a, a lot of engagement and uh, so a lot of results and a lot of material to get through today. Uh, so in a couple of moments, uh, Georgiana and Selena are going to take you through the, uh, the highlights of, of the report. And uh, again, I think that it's already published, so it is available on, on the uh, website already. Uh, and then after the, um, after the presentation, uh, we're going to have, uh, as, as is somewhat typical, we're going to have some uh, responses uh, so I use the word typical there, which is partly true, because somewhat unusually, uh, today we are joined uh, by some colleagues from the Irish Students' Union, um, the Irish yeah, Second Level Students' Union. So Ruben Murray and Alicia O'Sullivan uh, are going to offer observations on the report, and then Clive Byrne, uh, and I hope, Clive, you, you, you don't mind me describing you as, as, as a slightly more typical uh, respondent at an ESRI uh, event, so Clive is Director of the National Association of Principals and Deputy Principals, and uh, he'll be giving a response as well. So after all the uh, those sort of presentations and responses, we, and then the event will be uh, drawn to a close by Imran Allen, who is the CEO uh, of Educate Together, and uh, Imran will offer some concluding comments. So I think that's all uh, we, we need uh, for now. Uh, so it, it really is a great presentation then. I think uh, Georgiana is going, no, no, Selena, I think, is going to start. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to you, uh, Selena, and uh, we're very much looking forward to the presentation. Thanks, Alan. Um, I think Georgiana is going to put up the presentation now. Okay, I'm going to kick start. I'm going to provide a brief context to the study, some of the key research questions we sought to address, the methodology we adopted, and then I'm going to hand over to Georgiana, and she's going to take you through some of the key findings. It's a really big report. It is a wealth of information, so I urge you to go and look at the, the full report when you can. Okay, so just briefly then in terms of the context, everybody is well aware that Ireland has become more ethnically, racially, and indeed religiously diverse. And this has obviously had very direct implications for the school landscape for primary and post-primary schools. Not just in terms of the demographic shifts or the changing profile of the school population, if you like, but the knock-on implications that has had then in terms of stakeholder demands for schools. Um, and in particular, parents um, in particular have really increasingly sought a more diverse school landscape in the sense of having more multi and non-denominational schools. And I guess also then there's been important, an important policy, policy and legislative context. And again, policy is increasingly sought to provide a more diverse school landscape. And perhaps the most recent illustration of this is the Action Plan for Education in 2019, um, where it was explicitly recognised that more diversity is needed to meet the changing needs of the Irish population. So the first Educate Together second level school opened in September 2014, um, and there were 17 then in operation by the school year 2019-2020, and a few more have since opened this year. Our study was concerned with the 13 schools which opened prior to 2019, and of those 13 schools, 11 agreed to participate in this study. Now, Educate Together describes itself as Ireland's equality-based schools, and really they ascribe to four underpinning key principles, if you like. Um, they're equality-based, so by that they're respecting individuals' abilities um, I'm sorry, individuals' abilities to learn in different ways. They're co-educational, they're learner-centered, so they're really focused on what the needs of individual students are, and they're typically democratically run as well. So by that, they're encouraging the active participation of students and parents in school life and in decision-making within the school context. Given the scale of growth and the distinct ethos of Educate Together schools, 
it's really timely to examine the experiences of all the stakeholders within these school settings, particularly the student voice. And we feel that this study provides really important evidence for Educate Together, who, which is very much in its infancy at second level, but for schools more broadly within Irish education. So we sought to address six key research questions in this study. Firstly, we asked how do stakeholders reflect on the ethos of Educate Together schools and related to that on the provision of ethical education within these settings. We were very focused on the student voice and particularly on student engagement and their sense of belonging in school. We we're also focused on how students reflect on their interactions with their peers and with their teachers, the relationships they have, and on the approach to discipline and behavior management within their schools. We asked questions then in relation to how students reflect on decision making and dem democracy within their schools. And we were also quite focused on the teaching and learning methodologies adopted and including the use of digital technologies in the classroom. And finally, the study explored how do students, how do schools, or particularly school leaders, reflect on their relationship with management bodies and with the Educate Together organization as well. And while not directly, um, or what, not really an original research objective, the study also examined the challenges faced by newly established schools in Ireland, which emerged as a really key theme very early in the research. Just to briefly mention at this point, our methodology was a mixed method approach, as Alan has mentioned. So we started with an online or a survey of students in first and second year in these 11 schools. Most of those surveys were done online. And in these surveys, we really captured a whole range of information. Some can mirror growing up in Ireland data collected with 13 year olds. So we had a national, national comparative data set including things like friendship patterns, belonging and engagement, teaching methodologies, um, perceptions of different subjects and those sorts of areas. But we also included some additional measures which weren't included in growing up in Ireland and things like global citizenship and global awareness and the participation of students in their school and democracy. And these were really to try and capture, better capture aspects of the Educate Together ethos. Alongside the survey data, which was, which was reported for, which we had for just under 900 students in the 11 schools, we conducted in-depth qualitative interviews um, with school leaders, with teachers, parents, boards of management and management bodies. And we also conducted focus groups with students in first and second year. So the study really captured a very diverse range of opinion and perspective to allow a really rich understanding of student and stakeholder experience within Educate Together settings. So I'm just briefly going to touch on one first characteristic of the evidence that's emerging, and that's around the profile and the intake of, uh, to, to second level schools. Um, we find, first of all, that 57% of the cohorts did not attend an Educate Together primary school, just under half are girls. We find that 47% of mothers who attended higher education, and in brackets there, you can see the growing up on Ireland figure for this is 45%. So the, the, the population in, in, in Educate Together schools is broadly comparable to the growing up on Ireland data in terms of educational background. But then the figure 63 to 28 shows the range of variation, the variation in this across the 11 schools. So in one school, 63% indicates that their mother had attended higher education. And this was the case for 28% in another school. Um, we found that 9% did not live with their fathers. Again, quite a range here. 18% indicated that they spoke a language other than English at home. And again, a very wide diversity across the levels with the 11 schools ranging from 50% in one school to 4% in another. We found that 16% reported that they had a special educational need or disability, and 22% indicated that they received extra help at school. Again, wide diversity. But we caution here that by relying solely on student self-report um, special educational need, this is a very this isn't certainly not capturing the full population of students with, with special needs. And we know from other work we've done with growing up in Ireland that really you need teacher and, and parental perspectives when it, um, on this to capture the full special educational need population. Just briefly then in terms of the, um, the religious background um, of the students, you can see it's an extremely diverse population. So 35% report as Christian, 8% Roman Catholic, 39% um, indicate that they have no religion. 
And you can see the diversity of other religious groups here. So really a very diverse population is, is, was apparent from, from the early days of this research. Um, I'm going to hand over to Georgiana. Georgiana, do you want me to take off my slide share or do, do you want me to? Yes, let me uh, try again. I assume you can see the, uh, my screen. Yeah. Okay. The first question we asked participants as part of focus groups was, how would you describe your school to a friend? This was an open-ended question that was very broad and allowed students to talk about the aspects of their school experience that, was, that were more, most important to them. While they talked about many of the characteristic features of Educate Together School, such as calling their teachers by their first names or not having a uniform, um, they primarily talked about two core aspects that we see emerging across multiple aspects of the research and multiple stakeholder, stakeholder consultations. They talked about student-centeredness and they talked about diversity. Of course, the students did not use the word student-centeredness to describe their schools. They referred to student-centeredness in two distinct ways. They talked about the fact that they feel that the traditional teacher-student barriers are not as rigid as educate together schools as illustrated by the first quote on the slide. And more importantly, they talked about the fact that they find the teaching happening at educate together schools to be in alignment with the methods they would prefer. So they talked about active teaching and enjoying going to school because of, of the way they're exposed to their learning. Students also talked, and this was actually reflected in conversations we had with parents who talked about how diverse their schools are. And diversity was at one level captured by the fact that there's a mix of students at the schools. Students talked about the fact that their colleagues come from different countries, that they speak different languages, that they have different religions, that they have hobbies that are, particular, that are not necessarily the most typical hobbies you would expect students to have. Um, but they mostly talked about the fact that whoever they are, they feel included in the school environment. So when we talk about the diversity in the schools, we don't only talk about demographics, we talk about the feeling of inclusion that many students expressed in focus groups when they talked about their schools. Uh, parents also reflected on, on the diversity they, they saw at Educate Together Schools. For some, this was a reason for why they chose Educate Together Schools for their students, but primarily they recognized the educational value that being exposed to diversity has for their children. Student belonging, as mentioned by Selena, was one of the most important questions we try to answer as part of this research. So we, we included um, questions about student belonging, both as part of focus groups with students and also as part of the surveys we've collected from students. And um, in response to the question, do you feel you belong at the school across focus groups and across schools, the almost unanimous answer that we received from respondents was yes. Um, Belonging, again, took the similar forms that we saw in the question about what they like about their school, was feeling included in a diverse environment, uh, as illustrated by the first quote on the slide. But, but very importantly, and this is another theme that we see across the research, it derived from the strong relationships that students have with their teachers, which are based on respect and enable many other processes that are distinct that educate together schools to occur. They actually enabled discipline policies to occur. They enable student democracy to occur in the way it does. So this has been a key feature through which many of the, uh, many of the ethos elements of educate together are enabled the strong respect relationship between students and teachers. But of course, and this also hints at the fact that we found some issues associated with being a new school in Ireland, some students did reflect on how the condition of their accommodation may actually impact on their belonging, as you see illustrated by the third quote on the slide, where a student did consider whether or not they should join a school given the state of the facilities they, they are at. But in the end, they felt happy to have attended the school. Um, as part of the survey we've conducted with students, we use two scales, two different measures uh, to actually gouge engagement and belonging among students at Educate Together Second Level Schools. The first measure of belonging we used is derived from the Growing Up in Ireland study. Um, and uh, it simply asks students, um, how do you feel about school in general? This is a um, rather rather a nuanced metric of uh, gouging engagement. When students are asked uh, to respond to this question, they're given five options ranging from I hate it versus 
I like it very much. Um, uh, but it's unclear uh, the extent to which this question captures belonging in a specific community or an attitude that students would have towards school regardless what school they attended. Uh, however, we do see on this graph that uh, on average across all educated together second level schools, there's a slightly um, lower level of, of students indicated that they, they like school quite a bit or they like it very much, but it's, it's very small across all schools. But another, another finding that you see on this slide is the fact that there's again a wide variation across the educate together schools included in this research uh, on aspects of whether students feel uh, how students feel about the school they're attending. In order to compensate for some of these limitations, uh, Selena and I um, derived a new scale of belonging and we asked students um, a series of questions that would better capture how they feel about their their school. So what you see on the slide is that um, almost uh, 76 percent of students across all schools indicate that they do feel they belong at their school. Uh, almost uh, uh, almost 90 percent of students indicate that they feel accepted as they are and 80 percent indicate that they feel respected. And we tested the scale for reliability and validity too, and we had uh, um, uh, indication that this is a good good measure for belonging uh, across participants. Um, but this goes back to the idea that diversity isn't just about membership; it's also about feeling included and feel, feeling you belong. And that's something that we saw both in focus groups and in in the survey with students. The other important uh, note here is that we actually wanted to see variations between students on whether or not they feel they belong. So what we try to do is see if there are differences between whether you're a boy or a girl, whether you have a special education need or not, whether you come from a family who doesn't speak English as their primary language at home versus, who's, versus someone who was born and bred uh, by air Irish parents in Ireland. And um, again, speaking to the inclusiveness level in the schools, we found no variations in levels of belonging and engagement between these categories that would traditionally, um, would traditionally link to gaps. Um, so generally underprivileged populations were just as likely to feel they belong as, as generally privileged populations, which again, speaks to the inclusiveness levels in these schools. We did find, however, that students in their second year were um, less likely to feel they belong. This is a trend that's consistent with prior research on the Irish context, and it's not, not uh, specific to, to educate together schools. Um, both in focus groups and on the, on the survey, we've asked students about democratic practices at their schools. Uh, and what you see on this slide is selected um, um, answers from, from the, uh, the survey. So uh, these are some of the questions we asked about democratic participation. And again, what you see here is that over 80% of students feel that they're encouraged by the school environment to take action on things that are important to them. Uh, this was also something that students brought up in focus groups. Many, many students talked about being involved with uh, committees that um, are specifically focused on issues such as climate action or LGBTQ rights. Um, of course, some of these schools had student councils, but the manner through which students actually got involved in decision-making also met varied across schools. So some schools used an assembly mothers, model, whereas in other schools, um, a student council was formed. But generally speaking, students felt that there wasn't a need for, for those structures to exist, for them to feel that they can actually express their voice and feel listened by their, by their teachers. As you also see on the slide, um, more than 80% indicated that they feel their teachers listen to them when they share an opinion, either often or very often. Relationships between teachers and students and teachers and other staff members that educate together schools were very important. And as I mentioned previously, the pace of respect between the relation between teachers and students enabled many other processes at the school. Uh, in many ways, uh, participants in focus, focus groups indicated that because they respect their teachers, they wanna be their best around them, as you see in the second quote on the slide. Um, and they, they feel that that relationship of respect is enabled by being able to call their teacher by their first name, but it was, it's mostly enabled by the fact that teachers take an active, active interest in them as students, as holistic individuals and their quirks and problems and challenges. Um, one of the areas where the comparison with growing up in Ireland was 
uh, salient is in understanding the relationships between students that educate together at second level schools. So although on average, uh, students that attend educate together at second level schools come to that school with fewer friends than the typical Irish student at a general school in Ireland, um, by the time we surveyed them, which was in the fall of their first year or in the fall of their second year for the cohort we surveyed, they had a comparable number of friends to growing up in Ireland. So the, the, the environment of the school enabled them to create more connections, regardless of the fact that they joined the school with fewer friends than the average Irish student. We also looked at bullying um, and we found that 10% of respondents to the survey have experienced some form of bullying in the last few months and 1% indicated they have inflicted bullying on uh, someone else. Um, these forms were um, broadly very mild. They were in the form of um, uh, verbal, um, uh, verbal of sayings that were not, were not appropriate. Uh, we have not seen high incidences of physical bullying by any means. These figures are actually comparable to the national average in Ireland. They are no higher than you would see it uh, at other schools according to, to GUI data. Um, and this takes us to the discussion about uh, discipline practices and the use of restorative practices at the Educate Together second level schools. The first thing I want to mention is, uh, as with many other aspects we talked about today, we saw a wide variation in, um, in how schools manage their discipline policy. So there wasn't one single model that all schools used to, to respond to, um, to this particular issue. But when asked how do they address discipline at their schools, school leaders across schools primarily talked about the fact that they employ a positive approach towards discipline, where they try to highlight positive behaviors rather than only focus on negative behaviors. And for many of the schools in the study, this took the form of restorative practice. Um, however, in interviews with students and teachers, uh, there's been some concern about the fact that the flexibility embedded in using a restorative practice, practice approach that, again, is based on respect between between, uh, between parties and maintaining relationships um, may actually not seem fair to a 13 year old. So if you see different students being treated differently, if they committed the same action that you perceive as problematic, then students had a sense that maybe it wasn't fair. Whereas this approach is fully consistent with the restorative app a practice approach that prioritizes relationship building. Uh, but this, this remains an area of potential intervention and further qualification for, for Educate Together schools. Um, in the same way as we've asked students to describe their school, we've also asked teachers to describe their schools. And um, surprisingly, actually maybe not surprisingly, the responses we received from teachers were very consistent with the responses we received from students. Teachers very often talked about the inclusive school environment when they discussed their, their, their workplace um, and feeling that they, they're able to have good relationship with their students. Um, and most of the quotes on this page illustrate that. Um, I also want to note that many teachers indicated that it's hard work to, uh, to be a teacher at an Educate Together school, that there is an expectation for teachers to give their best. And from what we've seen, many, many teachers were on board with this. They really wanted to be there for their students. They were committed to the Educate Together ethos and um, they had fun doing their work. Of course, there were some challenges, but for the most part, they, they were happy with, with their experience there. Uh, we've also asked teachers about both their own autonomy and the autonomy that students have in the classroom. Um, and teachers talked about the fact that their autonomy is enabled by the good relationships they have between, uh, between each, with, with each other, with other teachers, and also the relationships they have with school leaders. Uh, so that enables uh, them to have autonomy and use it within the boundaries of the national curriculum, of course. But very often teachers gave examples of using their autonomy to actually enable differentiated teaching. So this was actually one of the ways to which they allow students to perhaps choose between two different texts they can, uh, they can read for their, uh, for their weekend read, or perhaps um, choose to make a video or an essay or a group presentation to show their learning. So, um, very often, both for students and for teachers, autonomy was used to allow for teacher uh, for teaching differ differentiation. 
In terms of actual teaching practices and the teaching philosophy used by these schools, we don't see that much variation between the typical Irish school captured by growing up in Ireland and educate together school. So on most indicators, things are broadly the same. Students that educate together at school still receive homework. They still have uh, um, to sometimes copy notes from the board. So these are practices that you would see at a typical school and you also see at an educate together school. The two areas where we saw some variation uh, that's more systematic between educate together schools and growing up in Ireland data is on uh, the use of projects outside of class time and group work with other students. Uh, two questions, we've used two questions that are derived from the Growing Up in Ireland study to, um, to look at engagement with different subjects, with key subjects. And one of the, uh, one of the findings uh, of our study is that um, broadly, students that educate together at schools uh, showed slightly lower levels of interest in key subjects, particularly noteworthy for science. The interest was lower than in, grow in Growing Up in Ireland, um, and that's something that further research can look into. Uh, we didn't see that much variation in terms of finding subjects difficult um, in comparison with growing up in Ireland. So broadly speaking, with the exception of um, um, Irish, okay, the, uh, the population of, of our survey is very comparable with the population of growing up in Ireland in terms of interest in, uh, in terms of finding subjects difficult or not difficult. Another noteworthy finding of our report, and this would be timely um, in the context of the, the last, um, last period of school closures and in the potential event that um, schools will have to use um, online uh, learning in the future, we found extensive use of technology at all the schools we visited. Again, there was some variation in terms of preference for different technologies, but for the most part, um, uh, students were very engaged with us, teachers were very engaged with us. So you can see that um, more than 90% of students indicate that a teacher uses the internet in the classroom. 80% um, of students indicate they use tablets and iPads very often or often in their in their teaching. And that's been supported by what Selena and I have seen during during school visits too. Interviews with uh, school leaders were a bit heavier in many ways. So um, they, they have a lot upon themselves um, running a school, but also running a starter school. And that's where we had a lot of um, discussions with school leaders around the additional challenges they face um, being a starter school in the Irish context. So for some principals, the task of ensuring um, the safety of, of the, the physical safety of students, which translated in uh, the safety of students in a, in a building site sometimes uh, took priority. And uh, in those cases, principals indicated they didn't have as much time to focus on the learning that occurs in the school, which they perceived to be their main mission um, as they would have liked to, to have. Um, there were also some concerns associated with the allocated resource hours for students with additional needs at these schools um, in, in, in light of the fact that these are grown schools and resource allocation doesn't take current need into account, but past needs. So that's been an area that um, might require improvement. And teachers also had some challenges associated with teaching at early at, at uh, starter schools. Some of them were on part-time contracts and uh, were in a position where they had to do an extra job to be able to support themselves. And schools viewed the, the ability of offering full-time contract as an incentive. So they would have liked to be able to support teachers and recognize and respect their staff more by being able to offer full-time contracts. Um, but there are also challenges that are typical of an Irish school at the moment, right? So some principals discuss the fact that um, it's at times difficult to get Irish teachers, right? So then the supply side of teachers in Ireland has been something that has affected Educate Together schools, although not all of them. Some of them said that they had quite a bit of interest from teachers to, um, to work there. Regardless of these challenges, one of the notice, one of the things we've noticed in, in, in this research is that Educate Together schools have been able to attract both teachers and school leaders that are committed to the Educate Together school ethos. And that's actually one of the main mechanisms through which um, the four core principles that Selena talked about at the beginning of the presentation 
can actually be embedded in these schools. So they're all very committed to making those, those principles come to fruition. So just to briefly conclude, um, the 11 schools that we visited as part of, of, as part of this research study have a diverse composition. And on some aspects, they're more diverse than the typical Irish school. However, the key takeaway here for me is that it's not in the mix that you have the difference, but in the, the ability, their ability to create an inclusive culture for the students who are there. We also found that irrespective of gender, special, special education needs status, language spoken at home, and whether or not they are um, of a main religious belief in Ireland, they experienced similar levels of belonging and engagement, which is an encouraging finding for the um, inclusiveness point I was making er earlier. Um, we found evidence from different stakeholders that didn't talk to each other before talking to us and synchronize their message that, um, that the schools are learner-centered and democratically run. So parents ind independently talked about this, teachers independently talked about this, and students also talked about this. Also noteworthy, the starter school start status, uh, particularly for the subset of schools that we visit, which are in temporary and pre precarious accommodation that impact on the student experience, as well as the experience of teachers and school leaders, and has created some additional challenges for these schools. However, as I just said, um, one of the strengths of these schools has been in the fact that it was able to attract teachers and school leaders and parents and uh, students who are committed to the Educate Together ethos in creating communities that are diverse and where students say they belong. We'd like to thank the principals, the school leaders, the teachers, guidance counselors, students, parents, chairs of boards of management of the schools, including the study, and also representative management bodies that have engaged positively with this research. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, uh, Georgiana. And uh, thanks, Selena, as well. Uh, fantastic presentation. You got a lot of material in. And it is, I have to say, it's a fantastic study. Um, I had read it previously, but just listening to your uh, your presentation, um, you know, you, you do as a reader feel you're getting a sense of how the schools run and how they operate. And uh, I think I've made this comment before as a, a, an economist by training, uh, I was always very focused on the, uh, the quantitative dimension of all these studies. Uh, but my sociology friend, Selena included, have uh, educated me over the years on uh, the, the importance of qualitative research. And really this is, I think, a classic example uh, that you're, we're getting a much sort of fuller uh, flavor uh, of, of the schools that we're talking about. I think that's been wonderful. Of course, uh, as a consequence of that, there are so many questions that arise as a result of the study. There's so many more issues that I want to interrogate. But uh, anyway, I better not get sort of unilaterally start the Q&A session now. Uh, we'll, we'll postpone that for a couple of, uh, couple of minutes. So. Uh, we want to get some of the responses now. Uh, so can I begin by asking Ruben Murray uh, to join us? And uh, Ruben, I think um, yourself and Alicia, and then five as well. Well, yourself and Alicia have about, uh, about five minutes. Uh, so just, uh, I need to ask you to be slightly disciplined uh, to, get, to get your remarks uh, in, in, the, in the five minutes. So do you want to join us, Ruben? That's perfect. Just to confirm, Alan, uh, is it 10 minutes for me and Alicia between the two of us? Uh, I, I, I'm looking at my program here and uh, it looks like it's 10 minutes between the two of you. But look, if you if you drift on to uh, seven minutes each, we won't fall out over it. No, it, it should be within that. Uh, thank you, Alan. That's first off. So uh, my name is Ruben Murray. I'm the president of the ISSU. What does that mean? So that's the Irish Second Level Students Union. Uh, we are the representative organisation for second level students across Ireland. How we work is member student council join us and that's just who we are first off i do want to express educate together it has a reputation within the issu a very good one it's always thought of fondly it's always respected very well so i just wanted to communicate that and uh, very glad to have been invited here to discuss today educate together it's been very clear that there is a lot of focus on active teaching and uh, how students can be involved and it's very student centered approach and that's what's really come across and it's great, wonderful and heartening to see as a student body. And what, how we've done it is myself and Alicia, we've split up the report and are taking two different looks at different areas. The first one I want to look at is in relation to looking at the different abilities of students to learn. That's something that came across in the report that was very key and is very critical in that it's supporting 
different kinds of learners. We have kinesthetic learners, auditory learners, visual learners and it's made very clear their work so that I can cage to them and to contribute because unfortunately what we see in schools is that they only are focused on one particular type of learner or possibly two and it varies from teacher to teacher. This is a real progressive way to ensure that the school community and everyone's experience of the school is equal and proactive and actually works for any, everyone. I'm sorry am I freezing? I see a comment there. Well, you did earlier, but actually you're, you're back in action, uh, Ruben, so, so uh, not along. Oh, perfect. Uh, so that's something that we really want to highlight, that it was a very proactive step by Educate Together. A second key question that actually came up was where the survey asked, uh, what do you believe makes a good teacher? Just from reading that myself, that's a question that's not asked enough in schools across Ireland and in the education system, we believe. And so it's very good that this information has been gleaned from students and what we want to say to educate together is uh, don't leave that in the report take that look at that and apply it into schools and we can see that is happening it says that teachers often provide places for students to provide feedback and that's really that's real active teaching where you're starting to tailor how the teacher works around students because too often we see uh, there's maybe not enough of that engagement with students at that local classroom level and by doing that it creates a sense of partnership and collaboration where students have buy-in and they believe it can really work for them and it gives the teachers the unique tools tips and tricks to really focus in and make their teaching methods work for students too that was very strong key and we felt that that was a really good part and we'd like to see and would encourage educate together to implement that across all their teachers because that is a really progressive step uh, Another key area was the use of technology in classrooms. Technology in classrooms, it varies from school to school. We see uh, some schools have implemented, everyone uses a laptop or a tablet, uh, others are still just using textbooks. Digital literacy, ICT skills, it's very important in today's economy and in today's world to have a good competency in it. And building that from the school level at the start is very, strong and really good practice in our opinion and it can be seen in the uh, report that, that is happening. Uh, I am aware that there has been some worries and issues but it's important to note that uh, it is a good step overall. We do want to note that those who stand to lose out though from ICT and the use of it is disadvantaged students. Uh, so students who maybe can't afford a, a tablet or a laptop or moreover uh, students who have, uh, I remember one year, students who had a uh, family who had triplets in one school and that was the year they introduced tablets. So there was a very high cost on that. Uh, one uh, solution we are aware of is where schools have laptops which are owned by the school and they lend out to students uh, just to use during classes such as Chromebooks or the likes. And that's a really good way to ensure that everyone is caged to. But the use of ICT in the classroom is a very strong and proactive step that we want to encourage and it's great to see happening. One area that seems to be unique to Educate Together schools themselves is ethical education. This was something I was not aware of beforehand. And it's an, I, we believe it to be a very insightful class, I am aware that there's worries of overlaps between SPHE and CSP, but the formation of this kind of subject to really create a space where students can reflect on their own views and biases, to think critically, question and take on equality and justice issues. It's a real space that usually isn't provided in schools and it's great to be provided here. It's really important that students do challenge that, that they have that time to reflect, think and discuss among themselves. The exchange of ideas is really a wonderful time, I think, for students to really learn and gain insights. And I do believe that that is something that really contrib would contribute to the sense of Educate Together schools being the equality schools in Ireland, as was stated earlier. One key area that was mentioned here is that students' experience of the subject depends largely on their teacher. We found similar issues in relation to RSE and uh, SPHE. Uh, it takes a teacher who really wants to engage and has the confidence to tackle tough issues as well to make a subject like this really work. And that comes down to the confidence of the teacher sometimes as well. So 
in, to ensure that everyone really gets the most out of this subject, we would really suggest a CBD or continual professional development for teachers delivering the subject. So just training around that continues to help build up that confidence and make sure that they are delivering it in the best way it can. Because sometimes it's limited to the teachers who just have the right personality to deliver these kinds of subjects. But we feel there is a space to encourage this. And uh, that's the end of my contributions and I'll pass over to Alicia. The final thing I do want to say in relation to ISSU, we really believe that, especially in this time and this worrying time in the state of education in Ireland, is that stakeholders working together to try and improve and create a robust education system in Ireland is key. And from that, it's very clear that there is that collaboration with students here, and that's really heartening to see. But also, if anyone wants you talk with us, and um, my you can get in contact with us at our website okay Ruben you actually you do seem to be breaking up a little bit now but luckily we got uh, I think 90 95 98 percent of your remarks so uh, that worked okay <clears throat> so Alicia are you ready to uh, take over now yeah I think Zoom is trying to cut um, <laughs> thanks very much um, so I'm Education Officer at ISSU, um, so I'll, I'll continue quite quickly. Um, the first topic uh, I, I kind of, I picked out the four that quite struck me both within ISSU and, and, and personally as, as someone who didn't go Educate Together School. Um, the first one being the core values of the Educate Together School, um, a quality based, co-educational, learner centred and democratically run. Like, these are, are so forward looking and inclusive and and I mean I, I think they are giving young people the best opportunity to strive equally within the current education system um, and, and, and personally reading through the report and I said it to Ruben as well um, I was quite disappointed that I, I didn't get to go to an educate together school because they, they just seem so progressive um, and just outstanding really any and even the feedback from the focus groups um and i suppose how how this is evident and, and how in, in in reality how these core values kind of are shown um was when the survey was carried out um it said in the report on behalf of educate together in 2008 and said that parents who send their children to educate together primary schools would send them to educate together secondary schools if they existed um so again a great reflection of how positive educate together schools are particularly in ireland that is you know becoming more ethnically and and racially diverse um and, and it's important and, and reflecting off what ruben said as well about the um the lessons that that are being taught in the educate together schools um the second topic um i explored was the student-centered approach um a huge point stood out um again personally for me as someone who didn't go to an educate uh, to an educate together school um you know, students were describing it as learner centered, diverse, which is, is something to be hugely admired to be coming directly from students. Um, I mean, that sort of commentary, I personally think is quite rare um, in and, and in relation to this and to the core values, um, a student centered approach described as means that we put children in the heart of all policies and practices and involve them in decision making where appropriate. Um, and this is just extremely valuable sentiment and, and, and gives young people um, and, and, and students uh, their voice and, and they're being told that, you know, their voice is, is wanted. It's not just needed, but it's wanted. Um, and again, describing their schools as inclusive, friendly, accepting, um, and it just all seems to, to ring absolutely true. Um, the third one I explored was um, teacher and learning. Again, uh, another huge point from students' perspectives. Uh, they found the lessons to be engaging and that they liked the teaching me uh, methods. Uh, like this is something to be recognized as a huge success to have students giving feedback like this. Uh, a very strong quote that struck me, um, was from a focus group in, in school Magnolia. Um, again, uh, the teaching is uh, the teacher is teaching with you, uh, not at you. Uh, just something that that is just so such a powerful message. Um, and I think that there was a link. Uh, there was definitely a link made between uh, how students were calling their teachers by their first names, um, and that it was a sense of mutual respect, which is an interesting point actually, because it, it is argued a lot of the time is the reason for calling them Mrs. O'Sullivan or or Mr. McCarthy is a sign of respect. But is that creating then 
when you look at it in, in the opposite perspective, is that creating, you know, this sort of hierarchy of, uh, of respect. Um, and I suppose there, there is elements of feeling patronized by teachers um, that, you know, you can be aware of on, on, the, gra on the grassroots level. And students feeling, you know, when they're in fifth or sixth year, definitely when you hit 18 years of age. Um, so it's it's amazing to have that sort of mutual respect relations. And uh, fourth and final point, um, of course, had to be student voice. Uh, that's who we are. Um, it's uh, it's evidently central in the Educate Together schools. And it, it stuck out to me a lot. Um, a large body, it said in the report, large body of research demonstrating the importance of student engagement and belonging for a host of short and long term education outcomes. Again, like even just acknowledging this and then incorporating it is huge as part of the establishments um, and students saying that, you know, student councils um, were a valuable me mechanism for involvement in decision making in schools, that they weren't just a formality, which again is, is something that I would have experienced personally and like we've seen within ISSU as well with student councils just being set up for the sake of them being set up um, and students wanting to make progress but them not being supported in doing so and and students also saying that you know they didn't have to be part of the student council to get their voice heard which <laughs> something I haven't heard of before and students feeling like they had a, a way of uh, of reaching out directly to the school um, and, and not having to go even through the student council, which again is absolutely outstand, outstanding. So, um, and I reflect everything Ruben said earlier. So I, I'm just super impressed by the report. It's, it's really uh, inspired me to be honest. Um, and yeah, thanks very much. Great, thanks so much, Alicia. And again, um, thanks Ruben earlier. You, you both did fantastic jobs. We, we'll happily have you back uh, to ESRI events when we're, um, discussing such things. And uh, Alicia, you talked about being inspired. Hopefully you've been inspired to uh, pursue a career in social science. And who knows, we, we might see you back uh, at the SRI in a, uh, a more uh, full-on role rather than just speaking at conferences. But sincerely, thanks so much for that. It's, it was an honor to have you both uh, with us. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, Clive, I know this is a really, really busy time for you. Uh, plenty for uh, principals and deputy principals to be thinking about. So we really appreciate that you've taken some time so again, if you want to take uh, 10 minutes, I, we're, I know we're, we're running slightly behind time, but we're getting lots of interesting um, contributions. So I, I, I'm guessing we'll probably drift over to the better a quarter past four or something like that. And um, so for participants, if, if people can stay with us to the better quarter past four, that'd be great. So over to you, Clive. Uh, thanks very much. And I was delighted to have the opportunity uh, when I was invited by Sandra and Emer to read the report. It's a magnificent uh, statement of the contribution that Educate Together have made over the years. Alan had said earlier on about um, uh, Ruben and Alicia not being typical ESRI seminar individuals. Yeah, I'm probably a little bit older and a little bit wiser and I go back to the NDNSP and the Dawkey School Project and the North Bay Project from the times when I was working in Mount Temple. And my educational experience um, it took me to Mount Temple Comprehensive School, Presentation Brothers School, and also St. Mary's in Red Mines before coming over to take over the, end, uh, the National Association um, a number of years ago. I think what we have here is a well-respected organization collaborating uh, with um, a, a, a structure of schools that has an awful lot to say and an awful lot to give uh, in the context of Irish education at a time when it's very, very um, uh, demanding uh, in terms of running schools. Um, one of the points, and it was referred to by Alicia earlier on, was the research that said that um, a large majority of parents would send their children uh, to an educate the second level school, an, ed an educate together second level school, if they had the opportunity or if there was one available. Now, I was taken by the study survey, which says that 57% of the students who participated in this didn't actually attend an educate together primary school. And I was also taken with the number of uh, students um, who, um, uh, were, were, were um, uh, anxious uh, to uh, inculcate views of respect because certainly it came across very carefully in the, in the report that students feel that they're involved in the decision making and were consulted age appropriately. And I know that there wasn't as much detail in terms of sixth year students, but in the documentation that came from the first and second year, I think that that was really meaningful. 
I also was taken by the fact that teachers engage in a breadth of teaching philosophies and have wide degrees of autonomy. I think that that makes um, for a very, very healthy school climate and a very healthy school environment. But I was interested in terms of the good relations between the teachers and the students, there was a, um, a, a, a statistic that came across that fewer students than in GUI indicated that they liked schooling attending within it. So, I mean, in those uh, it's interesting to see that for a system that's so democratic and has put so much emphasis on respect that there were and students who felt that it wasn't meeting their particular needs. Now, one of the points that came to me was and mentioned earlier on by the speakers was in relation to ethical education and the Educate Together ethos and the ability to exercise it in starter schools. And one of the issues that came out very, very strongly to me in the school in the report is the challenge that exists in starter schools. And many, many of the challenges are uh, to do with um, uh, accommodation issues and so on. But because the starter schools are there and Educate Together is going on a trendy ethos in the primary sector, I think a number of people in education um, who are studying to be teachers were attracted to the role of working in an Educate Together school because they actually affiliated themselves with the Educate Together ethos and they saw the ability to operate in an Educate school as something that would fulfill them very, very professionally. Um, it was interesting the denominational background um, of the parents and of the managerial background of the parents um, of, uh, of the students who were within the schools. And certainly the idea of multi-denominational, interdenominational schools, I think, is very, very indicative of a changing Ireland. And I note the Department of Education's plan to try and have 400 um, educate together primary schools in the, uh, by the year 2030. And that actually is, is, is something that's very, very worthwhile, because we would maintain as an organisation that we have far too many schools in Ireland. Over 3,000 primary schools and over 700 second level schools is very, very difficult to cope with, I would say. And it makes the point that education in Ireland is governed by competition rather than collaboration. And I think that that's going to be a challenge for Educate Together at post-primary in terms of finding a niche for the uh, number of second level schools um, in the, in the, in the post-primary sector, given the fact that there are um, a breakdown between the, the voluntary secondary schools, the community and comprehensive schools, and uh, the, um, uh, the ETB schools, which are there now at the moment. One of the things that I felt was, you know, the principles of an Educate Together second level school of dealing with democracy, participation, advocacy, and so on. I think that that is um, where we should be in the Ireland of today. And one of the things that we've been trying to promote in our work as a, as a professional association is to actually be clear in our mind what we want a well-educated 18 year old to look like having gone through the school system. So I believe that in terms of those issues, Educate Together has a key, key uh, role uh, to play. Because when you look at the questions that were asked, how would you describe their schools to a friend, right? In terms of the comments that came, I thought that it was really, really interesting that people who go into an Educate Together second level school may have fewer friends, but by the time year one and year two comes to the fruition, that they find that it's there. Alicia's point about student democracy and student voice, I think it's really, really helpful because in our view, if you want to have a successful school, you need to have a very, very successful student uh, voice cohort and also accessible parents uh, that are keen to be involved in it. Now, I know in many, many instances, 40 years ago when the primary schools were being set up, an awful lot of the involvement of parents was regarded as being too demanding. And it was a worry uh, at the time um, when people were felt that the, the issues that were um, being campaigned on uh, by, by parents to have the type of education that they wanted for their children, I think that that's not something uh, that applies today, but certainly it, the mainstreaming of that approach um, where, where parents see that they have an involvement within the school and that their views are valued and they want to be in it, I think that that is really, really very, very productive in terms of how it would go. Uh, the diversity of the cohort, the decreased reliance on textbooks, and the fact that teachers teach multiple subjects in the uh, in largely um, new Educate Together schools, I think that's a feature in it. It did come across that it was regarded as a good thing to be able to offer a full-time contract uh, to, the, to the staff that were coming within to the schools, because many, many people 
um, when the schools were started, if you wanted to offer a broad curriculum, you had to have teachers teaching subjects that they may not be mainstream specialists in. But I think that that came across very, very carefully. The teachers were willing to go the extra mile. That was always regarded as something of a zealous approach in the Gwale schools. But I think that there's an element of that in the Educate Together teaching profession as well, that the teachers are willing to go the extra mile to embed the concepts of respect and diversity within the students. Now, one of the things that I've taken about was a comment from the parents that they wanted academic rigor and personal formation. I thought that that was a really, really strong quote from the parents in relation to it. But I was interested that like many, many parents, they feel that their kids aren't being stretched enough in many, many ways academically. Now, obviously, with the small number of schools, that's going to take time to work through. But the uh, challenge that many of the principals in getting in contact with us was that they were working a year behind in terms of the need for, for resources uh, to run the schools, particularly in the area of special educational needs. But certainly in the um, Educate Together schools, the willingness to undertake uh, the new technologies, the new teaching methodologies that are envisaged in the um, new junior cycle, I think that that is something that is really, really very worthwhile. I was taken with the idea of ethical education trying to produce robust citizens, and I think that that is very very, very uh, um, within it. But I was also taken by some of the comments where they said that, you know, there was an overlap between CSPE, SPHE, ethics, and things being boring, you know, in some ways. But I don't think that's the norm in many, many respects. And I would hope that uh, Educate Together as an organization would keep uh, with the idea of having ethics and discussion at the heart of what they want to go. One of the things that I took a keen interest in was in the whole question of the school leaders and the school leadership involvement within it and the need that Educate Together had to create a leadership that um, supports the respectful uh, ethos within the schools. And I was taken with the fact that half of the principals of the Educate Together second level schools had been in roles in previous schools and senior leadership roles. I thought that that was very, very interesting in view of their experience, either in education or in Europe, that that would be something that they would be willing to get involved in, have the, the experience, but also make a valued choice to move into the educated se Educate Together sector, because that's what they felt that they wanted to try and achieve. I was interested in their view that the training didn't just and um, wasn't designed to prepare them for management of a new school and that the multiple responsibilities had to be juggled as they go with it. Now, part of our key issues um, in NAPD is trying to put in place support, supportive administrative structures to enable school leaders to devote their main responsibility to the teaching and learning outlook within it. But one of the things that was called for, and I think will be a lesson to be learned by uh, the department and by Educate Together as it moves forward, is the call of the Centre for School Leadership to promote mentoring and, um, and coaching to the school leaders. And I think that that is something that is really, really important. And as a key partner and collaborator in the Centre for School Leadership, NAPD would be very, very willing to be in involved in that. Um, certainly one of the challenges that I think is there is that you have a desire to open new schools, but that has to be balanced with the need to support the existing colleagues that are there, particularly in schools that are not in new school buildings. And the challenge of operating within unsatisfactory building structures, I think, is certainly uh, beyond the, the, the call of what can be, uh, what can be done. There's no doubt about it that ET, Educate Together, it attracts dedicated, conscientious and progressive school leaders. That is no doubt about it, that people who have a view and they have a vision of what they want to achieve when they go there. They're working with a committed team of teachers and students who get the idea of a respectful interaction between parents and teachers and students. And the idea of working together to create a school community is going to be one of the challenges because Educate Together at the very start and the project schools at the very start were anti-establishment and the movement was driven by campaigners who were both parents uh, looking to move to a changing Ireland at a time when it was probably not fashionable or profitable to have that view. But Ireland has changed and Ireland is willing now to look at a different uh, education system and needs to look at a different education system, particularly in, as we look to put in place 
um, an assessment system at senior cycle which meets the needs of all students, not just those that want to be filtered in through university and uh, further education. And I think Educate Together is a valuable asset as a, in an attempt to be a Trojan horse, but the dilemma will be to find a niche because as I said earlier on, second level education is governed by competition rather than collaboration. And there is one of the ways forward, I think, with education is collaboration within the sectors. And I was very, very taken because I live in Cabra myself at the change that's taken place recently between the amalgamation of City of Dublin and education together to create a new establishment. So um, activist parents and teachers are still at the heart of the Educate Together process, but we want to make sure that what you want to achieve at the very outset does, well, if it gets mainstreamed, the system as a whole will benefit, but that it doesn't get mainstreamed at the thought of the central ideas, which were at the heart of Educate Together 40 odd years ago. And we know now that the um, grant aid uh, achieved by a Educate Together from Salesforce enabled the development of professional um, interaction and an introspective look at education and what it means. And I think that um, the, the, the grant has been well spelt on, uh, by Educate Together to look at the professional development of the teachers and also the expertise of ESRI, which are at the heart of growing up in Ireland in terms of their studies. So there's, look at it, it's, it's a 170 page report, Alan. There's an enormous amount in it. It's very, very difficult to do justice in about 10 minutes, but I leave it at that for the moment. Thank you very much. Okay, listen, we're, we're kind of running over a, a, a little bit, and I, I do want to uh, make sure uh, Emer has a, enough of time to um, make her concluding remarks. I, I should say we did get one comment in uh, that while this was a very useful uh, seminar, it would have been more useful if we had it on after school hours. Uh, the suggestion being 4.30 or 5. Uh, so that's actually an interesting, um, maybe 5 o'clock wouldn't uh, suit another constituency. But anyway, we'll, uh, we, we can think about that. Um, so listen, I'm, I'm going to hand over uh, to Ian Rinaldo now, who's you know, is, is the CEO of Educate Together. Uh, before I do so, can I just thank, uh, once again, everybody who's, who's joined in today. Uh, can I thank Educate Together for uh, partnering with the ESRI on this really, really fascinating study. Uh, thank all those who, who were involved in it. Uh, but I suppose as director of the Institute, everybody will understand that I want to pay a particular tribute uh, to my colleagues, Georgina and uh, Selena, for doing an absolutely uh, fantastic job on the report and, and more broadly. So again, congratulations, folks. And uh, with that, Emer, I'll hand over to you for some closing remarks. Great. Thanks, Alan. Um, and I'm going to pick up where you left off and continue to thank people. Uh, <laughs> and you know, there's a lot of questions there. I will, I will hopefully address a couple of them, um, but I, and, and I'll try and be as, as brief as possible. Uh, but as like all good research, really, this report it presents us with as many questions as it answers, um, and that's exactly what we wanted. So, um, and my first thank you is, of course, to Georgiana and Selena for you know such a fantastic job that you've done of a really high quality piece of research for us. Um, you know, it, it's a pleasure for us to work with such experienced and professional researchers. Uh, and with the ESRI, obviously, as an organisation, because, you know, in this area, era of kind of fake news and in this era as well as, and Clive alluded to it there, of kind of competition, if you like, between school types where everybody is saying everything, you know, everyone is saying that they're this or they're that. And um, it's really, really important to us to have independent, robust research, you know, drawing on both quantitative and qualitative methods um, and triangulated in the way that you have between the perspectives of students and school leaders. Um, it's really important for us to have that because of those public perceptions that, that somebody mentioned. Uh, and we're well used to this at primary level. You know, on the one hand, oh, your schools are all full of mid-class hippies, you know, and on the other hand, your schools are all for all the immigrants. And, you know, it's kind of, you, you can't win. There are, it's impossible for me to address the myths here because there are so many, you know, um, and sometimes they're contradictory. Um, but, you know, the whole area of competition between school types is very problematic, I think, for the system. And it's problematic for us as well. You know, we're very clear from our, our charter and from our um, campaigners what it is that we're trying to provide and really, we just need to stick to that, you know, and, and that's very much what we're doing with this research. We want to see, you know, we developed a blueprint, we developed a model, um, our, you know, the school leaders and teachers in the schools are putting it into practice. Our interest here is, you know, are they delivering what was envisaged? Um, and, and this research is, is a really, really important part of, of, of that. And, and thank you for, for doing such a thorough job on that. 
Um, I mean, I, I do also just want to thank our contributors today as well. Clive, uh, Clive Byrne and the NAPD have been very important critical friends to us, I would say, since the beginning. Um, and, and at the beginning, of course, and again, this touches on the public perception, we didn't have very many friends at the beginning. Um, you know, in the early days, there was a lot of resistance to the idea, but also a lot of confusion as to why anybody would want this type of second level school. I remember one particular meeting in 2007 with an organization who, who I won't name where after listening to our radical plans for not streaming students, despite the fact that that was actually what the research was saying people should be doing, um, and our outlandish ideas of involving students in decision making, somebody looked at me, you know, a very experienced, very good school principal looked at me and said, but, but that's very, that's very idealistic. Uh, and he didn't mean it in a good way, you know, it was, uh, so there, there was a, a lot of those types of perceptions to overcome, but from the beginning, the NAPD have, have you know, been listening to us and been advising us and been helping us. And, and like Ruben was saying, that's really, really important to us that all stakeholders work together. You know, actually we all want the same things. At the end of the day, we all want to improve the education system. And from the start, we have tried to work very hard with other people and, and we would thank the NAPD for that. And also thank you for your comments here today, Clive. There's too many for me to, to respond to, but, but all very helpful. Um, and to issue as well to, to the ISSU, we actually, our, our second level schools grew up with ISSU. So in the early days, I remember going looking for Leanne and Niall, who were the founders of the ISSU in 2008, to get their views. And they gave very generously of their time and their ideas. So, you know, our model is informed very much by uh, ISSU. And that's why it's really, really positive for us to have Ruben and Alicia here today. Um, and, and thank you for your comments. They're, they're really important to us. Um, you know, I like in particular the fact that you're drawing attention to the issues around technology for students for, from disadvantaged backgrounds. You know, these are really important things that, that we need to be thinking about as, as we develop. Um, so, uh, you know, as I said, there's a, there's a lot of thanks. Um, most of all, really, I need to thank our brave school communities you know our students our parents and our incredible teachers and school leaders in particular and, and there's plenty of evidence of, of the very hard work that they are doing in the research you know many many people volunteered their time and their expertise to contribute to this blueprint which is basically you know all, all these school leaders were handed in the beginning um, and it, it's an excellent document and i believe fiona richardson has has come along today who who kind of expertly drew together the aspirations of many people alongside the research and evidence of good practice to draw up this blueprint and it has stood the test of time but you know neither a blueprint nor a patron can develop a model of school and um, you know all of the campaigners you know all the volunteers that have been involved everyone has taken brave steps but at the end of the day all we really gave to these school leaders and teachers is an opportunity it was up to them to bring the blueprint to life and again the research has given us evidence of how that is being implemented and, and that's really really valuable to get the new score, the, the doors of a new school open is, is a huge undertaking, but to create the kind of welcoming, inclusive school community um, that, that the blueprint described and that we see, see evidence of in the research, the student-centered practices, the innovative cross-curricular approaches, the collaboration, the quality relationships, that's, that's a really important element of it, because we know that students can't succeed without those quality relationships um, from this research and from other research. Um, at the launch of this blueprint in 2009, Professor Ronya Highland called it both visionary and realistic, but until now, none of us really knew if it was realistic. Um, but these teachers and school leaders have made it real. And on behalf of the students in all the schools now and in the future, I just want to say thank you to those school leaders. Because, you know, again, for what we did the research for the learning and, you know, there's a range of learning in there and we will be picking through this in the months and years to come. But, um, you know, we already knew that our teachers, our schools were doing teaching and learning well, despite the myth uh, that, that, you know, for some reason, Educate Together schools wouldn't be striving for academic excellence. We know that they are from inspection report, reports, from feedback from students and parents and so on. But the research gives us really a greater depth of understanding of the student and teacher experiences and the challenges that the schools are facing. You know, we knew that new and developing schools need quicker access to permanent school buildings and better facilities, but the research shows us the impact of not having these facilities and not having these school buildings on students. Um, and we can use this to, to seek better and fairer conditions uh, for these school communities. Um, just uh, my, that brings me actually to my, my second last thank you, which is like, of course, this is high quality research and um, 
it's not cheap, as you all know, <laughs> and we wouldn't be able, we would not be able to do uh, this level of research and to provide the supports to our schools that we are now starting to provide. And this touches on one of the questions that was asked, you know, this type of learner centred ethos doesn't just happen. Um, it, it goes against a lot of what has gone before, you know, it's a hierarchical system. To, so to truly put students at the centre of decision making is very difficult and it requires support. And this research and many other ethos supports that we have developed have been funded by the Salesforce Foundation, as somebody already mentioned. And, and we are extremely grateful to Salesforce and to many other philanthropic and, um, and corporate investors over the years. The Educate Together Second Life model would not exist without, without fundraising, and we are incredibly grateful to, to everyone who has contributed to that. Um, and we need continued support in order to provide the supports that this research uh, identifies as necessary now as we progress to further develop this model and to provide more school places. Um, you know, our schools turn away as many students as they can accept, they're oversubscribed. Just today, we've uh, put in applications to open new schools in Gorey in County Wexford and Black Rock in South Dublin. Um, and we're also, as Clive touched on, working in partnership with ETBs around the country. Um, at the moment, we're working in, in two schools in City of Dublin ETB, and we're working, uh, we're starting to work with Wexford Waterford ETB um, around a school in Wexford Town. This is really important to us, this kind of collaboration, um, because you know we're not here to compete. We're here to improve the system, to provide the type of education, the learner-centered, equality-based education that, um, that, that is so much in demand, as, as so many other people have said. So look, I, I mean, I won't go on. I, I don't think, um, there's lots of questions unanswered. We'll all be working on this uh, in the weeks and months to come, and we're always open to further conversations. We could talk about it all day, but I, I'm very conscious of people's time. So my final thank you is to the presenters again for giving your time and your insights um, and the people who've been involved in organizing, um, Jean and Sandra and Laura and Luke um, and uh, everyone in the ESRI. Um, and mostly for yourselves. I mean, we didn't we didn't think we'd get anybody the week that's in it, the week before midterm, the week when lockdown is announced. Um, you should all be Christmas shopping, but uh, we've had such a good response both here in person uh, and in the media today. So just a, a genuine thank you, um, because this kind of engagement just helps us to to inform the further development of this model and to provide the supports that that these schools and these students really need. So so thank you all very much. <laughs>